My name is Daniel McKinley, and today we're going to be playing. We're going to be showing you how to play the two to four player game Dragon Realm by Game Right Games. So in Dragon Realm, players are trying to control different areas over the landscape here. Now there will be a certain number of cards that you'll set up from each of the levels as well as the dragon card on the bottom and that will depend on the number of players right now I have it set up for a four player game you also have a couple of these adventure cards up like this and you will choose one of the two sides of this card Let's, for most starting games we want to do the adventurers academy on your turn you're going to have a series of cards in your hand and you will either rest by taking more adventure cards in your hand or you will explore trying to send your characters onto, the, onto one of the locations. When you rest, very simply, you will take two cards. It could be a combination of face-up cards or cards drawn from the deck. When you take those cards, you draw them straight into your hand and you, have to have, you can only have a maximum of nine cards in your hand. When you draw from the face-up spot, you deal the next card available. If a goblin card comes up, then depending on which side it shows, like this one shows the left, you would place a goblin on one of the spots in the left side. Discard it and then continue, refilling. If you get a rock slide card, it'll have you pass adventure cards to either the left or the right, depending on what it instructs on the card. Players continue this until they have enough cards in their hand where they feel that they can properly adventure or send out some of their explorers into one of these spots. So let's show you how that works. There are three kinds of ways that you can explore. You can sneak, search, or storm. Sneak, you would be playing cards in order. For example, if I wanted to sneak into the Enchanted Forest, I could play these three cards, playing three, four, and five. If I wanted to search, you want to play cards of the same number. I could play these three sevens. Or, if you want to storm it, you have to play cards, it does not matter what color, but, or I'm sorry, of the same, of the number, but of the same color. So I could play these four cards that are all red. Now the deck consists of the numbers 0 through 12 and five different colors, so keep that in mind. When you play, you also want to keep in mind this yellow ring that might be around one of the icons. That will give you a bonus for successfully exploring using that style. So let's give an example. Let's say I want to search the Enchanted Forest. I will play three cards. So I'll play a three, four, and five. Cards in order. Then you'll roll the same number of dice. So since I played three cards, I'll be rolling three dice. Now your goal is you're trying to get to this number or higher. In fact, with three dice it's not possible, but instead if I searched, I would only have to roll a 5. So let's roll 3 dice. I rolled a total of 9. So since I successfully searched, I placed one of my adventures into one of the remaining spots. This continues doing so until a spot is filled. If at the end of your turn all of the spots are available or are filled in that, then whoever has the majority of adventures there would get that many coins. So it shows the first number here in orange, four. So I would take four coins from the bank. Whoever has the second most would get three. Also, whoever has the most will take this card as a reward. There are dragon stones printed on the bottom of this, and that will be for endgame scoring as well. Once that is scored, you replace it with this. Now, what happens is the goblins, they do count as players. So as they fill in these spots, they might get the majority bonus. In this example, the goblins would get eight coins and the purple player would only get three. They wouldn't receive the card, it would simply be discarded. Now let's say if I played enough cards like earlier and I failed to, to roll the number, like so, then very simply I take my adventurer and I put them in the adventurer's academy. So that way he can study and get better for the next turns. On this side, uh, you may remove adventures from here to add one to your roll. 
So if I rolled a 5 and I needed a 6 and one of my adventurers was on here, I could return him to my supply and add 1, making it the 6 needed. At the end of the game, any adventurers that are left on this academy will be worth a dragon stone as well. Now finally, if you succeed in, place, in searching, storming, or sneaking, and it has a yellow ring around it, instead of placing one adventurer, you would place two. Now obviously if there's only one spot available, you would still only place the one. Other places also do have abilities, like this one, the Enchanted Forest. Four has become three, and the Cave of Bats can only hold a maximum of two different players. So keep those in mind while you're playing. The game continues until one player, or I'm sorry, the, the Dragon card has been scored. More often than not, it'll say no goblins, and it'll be worth quite a bit of points. But since there are many to choose from in the game, you'll never see the same combination more than once. Lastly, you have these enhancement cards that you will get some at the beginning of the game. They have either a 1 or 2 value. For the starting setup, you would each get dealt 3 of these cards, and you may keep either 2 of them with a 1 value, or 1 of them with a 2 value. They will give you abilities throughout the game. Some will be one-time use, like it says on this one. This one, the wizard's hat, automatically lets you win a tie. Where other ones don't say one-time use, like this, the bananas, bunch of bananas, anytime you roll a pair of twos, it becomes a five instead. Those are continuous abilities that you get throughout the game. If later on you're playing with the advanced side, you can also return your adventurers from the adventure alley to get more of these enhancement cards. And that, in a nutshell, is how you play Dragon Realm. The player with the most points at the end of the game wins. One more thing, at the end of the game, all players are going to count up their Dragon Stones, and the players with the most Dragon Stones will get a 5 point bonus added to their final score. As you can see, this is the wonderful sequel to Dragonwood. We've had a blast playing it here at the shop. So, I highly encourage you to come check it out, and if you'd like to try it out, or just see how it plays, come by Zia Comics in Las Cruces, New Mexico, where we can show you Dragon Realm.